Καλημέρα, καλημέρα και καλώ ήρθατε στο Καλημέρα USA. Η σημερινή μα εκπομπή είναι αφιερωμένη στο γάμο. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Calimera USA. We have a great show in store for you. It is dedicated to weddings. And I'm going to start off this show with one of my favorite priests, Father Vasilios from St. John the Baptist at Gramercy Park. Father, I couldn't have a show about weddings without you. We need to find out everything about Kubaris and Kubari and what our responsibilities are. Uh, thank you, Yana, very much for being here, that I could, we can discuss this subject. Uh, we always run into a lot of uh, pressure First of all, uh, not the priests, but usually the families, and it's very difficult. Weddings, baptisms, uh, we did a baptism the other day, and uh, we can use the word hamos. In a little hamos, yes, it is a little as the uh, Greek American style. <laughs> That's it. You know, it's true. I think that what, ha what happens is the couple is so excited to get, you know, get married, right. and they have so much joy, and then when it gets down to the wedding preparations, I think they kind of lose sight of the reason they're getting married, and then... Right. That's what happens. It, their emotions take over because it's, it's a, a sacred time. It's really something great, and that's what I tell people. It's, it's an honor. I, I, it's an honor. When I was at the cathedral for five years, it was an honor to marry people there. And to do the service, the sacrament, it's a sacrament. It's not something that, you know, that, that uh, people say, oh, the church made up or it's something else. It's a sacrament. God blessed us at Cana. The first miracle he did was at Cana. I don't know how many people can turn water into wine, but sometimes with, uh, with the godparents or the parents, or no, 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 or gumbara, gumbara, they can turn the water into wine. But, I mean, it, it, it's a very, very trying time, though. And they lose sight, as you said, of what it is to be a Christian and what it is to be Orthodox and how important it is. I mean, every time I, I, as I said, every time I did a wedding there, and even now at St. John the Baptist, where I've been there now three years, exactly three years, it, we've put up so many weddings. You know, we, I just keep doing weddings and baptisms. I've done like 60 baptisms and weddings in three oh years God. since wow. I've been there. It's That's good. That means a lot of people are getting married and having children. And we a need lot to of procreate. I, before I came here, I got a call that a baby was born. So I went to the hospital to see the baby, bless the baby, and do everything from people that I married. That's wonderful. But I remember, and that's, I, I always remember my father and my mother, what they said when they were engaged and when they got married. They got married at the cathedral in 1940, 40, wow. almost 41. And every time I look down at the end of the service and I see the couple, I always think of my mother and my father. And that's what I want to leave people with at the wedding. What this is about. This isn't about where you're going to have the reception. This isn't about how, much, how many flowers you have. This is about how you're going to handle your life. And people lose that. They just get overwhelmed. I mean, I have phone calls constantly. Father, can we do this? Father, can we do that? Father, can we do this? Father, can we do that? You know, you push the limits sometimes of the church. Well, and they what, do. And they do. Well, what, let's tell our viewers uh, a little bit about uh, our Greek Orthodox religion. What is the procedure of a Greek Orthodox wedding? Well, first of all, they have to meet with the priest beforehand so that they can discuss, talk to the, pre talk to the people. They should, they should attend a pre-cana. What is a pre-cana? A pre-cana is where you go, and uh, some people from there their, their now uh, have really put it together. Usually the priest would do it, and they would discuss what it is to be married, what it is to have an orthodox house, all those things, but mainly about each other. Now, we have uh, Dr. Phil Mamalakis from Boston, from Holy Cross, uh, who's a therapist and also uh, goes around in our area, in the Eastern Seaboard, and holds these classes. And they're very good. We get 20... They're marital classes? Yeah. I love that. Pre marital Kena. classes. Which church? Pre they go to different churches. They go to different churches. Okay. Yeah. So they're scheduled to go different places. Where can someone find out about They're coming in November. Your archdiocese would have a, a yes, site of it okay. Is. Yeah, it's on the website, but I, I they sent to me the other day, and I, I can't remember. I'm inundated with so many emails. I don't remember which one it was, but I know in November they're going to have a, they're going to have one or two, and they come down. It's a whole day, nine thirty until four o'clock. They give you lunch. It costs a hundred dollars for the couple, each couple, and you're at a church. It's great. I mean, it's really. I went to the first one because when I was there, I said, look. You're going to come down and do these things. 
Uh, I know who he was because he was one of my professors. He was a nice man. He has uh, quite a few children, so he knows what it is to have children and have a relationship That's in wonderful. That's important yeah. because the priest does have to relate, uh, and this is wonderful, right. guys. I mean, I would check it out. Right. If you're getting married, uh, uh, look. Pre-Cana, look out for these uh, courses it's on the marriage seminars. Marriage seminars, you can you can find them on the Archdiocese website. We have that information on our screen right now, and that's great because one of my favorite movies is Robin Williams, <laughs> <laughs> because right. and it's so you learn so much about each other through this trying time. Right. That's the thing. You're always dealing with each other and what we're going to do, where we're going to go, we're going to make a living, how we're going to be here. We're but also responsibilities there. that you know a saying. man should have with his wife and a wife. Right. To her husband. So what they do, I, I stayed the whole day. So I, I went through the whole steps with them. And uh, I listened. I have the, they give you a pamphlet. They give you a book. It's pretty thick, a spiral. And you go through these seminars. This whole seminar teaches you what it is to go on a trip. If you were going on a trip one day and uh, your husband or your uh, 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 boyfriend, let's say, whoever it is, and you decide to go on a trip, what are you going to take? So that's what this is about. What are you going to take to your marriage with you? Right. <laughs> and is how are you going to be? Yeah. So they use the, a Volkswagen bus, the old Bo Volkswagen buses. That's the premise. Oh, I love it. So what are you going to do? Does the man go out and check the tires? You check the gas? You check the oil? Or do you just jump into the car and drive? So let's talk a little bit about sure. what are the responsibilities of a, of a, of a married couple to each other in our, our religion? What I try to say at the end of the service is some, it really is a summation of the whole thing, of who we are. I always say, people always, I hear this all the time, even when I went to school, when I studied uh, psychology myself, in undergraduate, I would always hear, you know, marriage is 50-50, and this is what we're supposed to do, and you have to give in to your wife, and the wife has to give in to her husband, but you know, back and forth. If you go 50-50, I remember when you went to college. You do? I was a long time ago. <laughs> and you went to college, and you were there, if you got a 50 on an exam, you failed. Now, if your husband went to college and he got a, if he got a 50, you didn't combine those two together to get 100. So that's the problem. We so have to give 100% each. Each. 100% each. I, I had a counseling session the other Saturday and Sunday with somebody who came pretty far from Florida to talk to me with his wife. And I told him, I said, listen, I married them in the cathedral, so I wanted to, they always come back to me. They call me, they talk to me, and I try to help them through their problems. And, because it's tough, especially if, you're, if you have a life like you have, or you're, this person's in demand all the time. What are the problems that uh, couples are facing today? This is the thing. I try to make them see that it's rowing a boat. Sometimes, all the time, you should both rowing on the left door, you and the right or him, or the right or you and the left or him, whichever. But you're both rowing at the same time, which means the boat is going in one direction, where you want to go. As soon as one stops rowing, you go in a circle. You're going in a big circle. So the other person has to say, look, I can't row anymore. So then the other person takes over. Somebody loses their job. So now there's only one income instead of two incomes. The other person goes crazy. What are we going to do now? I don't know what we're going to do. How are we going to do this? I remember my mother and father. My father asked my mother, Elpida, would you like to work or would you like to come and stay home and raise children? Because my father had to know what his responsibilities were to the marriage. So you have to have a conversation with your future husband or wife. You have to use dialogue all the wife. time. And, and discuss. Communication. And Communication. All the time. If you don't talk, you're finished. So, Father, what is the procedure for a wedding? In other words, what do they do? What does somebody have yeah, they to come, do? Like they come, like I get said, go to the, you're supposed to go to the, the counseling. They now. do the counseling. They do the, it's wonderful. It's really good. You'll love it. I mean, everybody loves it that comes. I said, even people who are married can go. What, that's great. That's so, great because they need the counseling. Everybody right, needs counseling right. because we all do. it's a relationship do it. that doesn't stop. I mean, I do it. Think you about know? me. I do it, too. I have to talk to my spiritual father and, and say, what am I doing wrong? Why do I feel this way? Why do I feel that way? Am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? Not that you doubt yourself what you do, but you can do something better. And you usually don't see it. Right. So you need somebody to, to sound off on. So when they choose a cubaro, if they're, non, if they're not Greek, what, what is the procedures that they That's the to? problem. They have to be orthodox. If they're not orthodox, they can't do it. Sorry, guys. You got it? we got to baptize your Kubato to become an Have to be orthodox. 
So especially if you want to do it yourself, if you want to baptize somebody or you want to be the uh, sponsor, we call them sponsors in mm -hmm. English. So if you want to be the sponsor, you can be the Nuna, Nuna, or Gumbara, Gumbara, whichever. So they, so they choose they choose the Gumbara or the Gumbara now. Right. What is what are the responsibilities of the Gumbara and the Gumbara? At the end of the at the end of the uh, baptismal, let's say. This is best man and and uh, best woman, right. correct? Yeah, or or. Uh, um, Maid of uh, honor and right, best man. Right. Kubaro and Kubara in Greek. Right. Uh, they usually, the only things that they would be responsible for, usually, besides the, the, the gift that they give the, the bride and the groom, usually that's what we do because we're Greeks. We pass something to them for their good. All right. So, the, 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 uh, as we say, the, uh, the kalatu, you know, for the, for the goodness of who they are. So, you give them something. But their responsibility is the, the stephana, is the rings first, and then the stephana. So they pay for the rings? No. The, 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 if they can, but they don't. What I mean, do you mean the responsibility is the rings? To bring the rings? No, no. They have to do the ring ceremony. The ring within. ceremony. OK. So they're so, responsible for the ring ceremony. Right. And During the service. And to buy the The stephana. first ser part of the service of a wedding is called the, is, is called the aravona in Greek, which is the uh, um, engagement in English. When we go to, to a, a restaurant or a house, Somebody wants to have the rings blessed and have them blessed because they're engaged, an engagement party. We read a partial prayer of the Aravona that we're going to read in the church. And we bless the rings there. So at the church, we do the same thing. So the first ceremony, we start with uh, Blessed is our God always, now and forever, unto the ages of ages. Amen. Not Evloyimeni. So the first segment, the first part is the Aravona, which is the engagement. We put the rings, we talk about uh, Moses, put a ring, and with a ring, uh, uh, the, the prodigal son was given to by his father. It's always this blessing, which is wonderful, that you, that you hear these words of how great this is, that you're receiving this ring. So the priest blesses it, turns around, and then puts it on their fingers. But before he does that, he says, Aravonizete o zulututeu stavros. They do that three times each. Then once they finish, and they put it on their head, they do it right on top of their forehead, and they do it on the other forehead, and then they bless them in the middle. Once they do that, and they do it three times to him and three times to her, then whoever the person is that's going to be the sponsor, the gumbara or gumbara, they come up and they... I put the ring on their, their finger on their right hand, not on their left hand, on their right hand. And I put it there. They go there, and then they exchange the rings three times. And now, that's just out. the engagement. And they, wear, the engagement. and they wear the ring on the right. So when, the right they, when you get married, the ring is put on the left. Is it the same ring? It's the same ring, but they usually, most orthodox will still keep it on their right hand. So uh, let's talk about the ceremony, right. which is a mystical ceremony. That's the first part. Right. The second part is now going to be the marriage. So the second part, the marriage lasts, it's about 45 minutes. The whole thing prayer. is 45 minutes. It's 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Walk us through it. Well, the, the first thing that we do is always, once we finish with the Aravona, then we turn around and we take the gospel and we start with the same start that we always do. Blessed is the kingdom of God. And then we do the petitions. We always do, we do the same thing in Aravona, we do the petition, we do the same thing in the uh, ceremony itself, in the marriage. And uh, we go through three or four basic prayers about what it is to be married, how, uh, who, was, who went around and, and found a woman when Isaac was looking for a wife. We go through all these beautiful, that's why... Biblical passages. It, yeah, I mean, the, when you hear the prayers, people always say the same thing. They say, Father, I, I've been to so many weddings, but I heard it in Greek. And I had no idea that it was so beautiful because the prayers are, are, are about the couple and how they're through this line of, these, uh, of age or through the time that these uh, events and this sacrament, this mysteria, uh, has taken place. So you actually start to really get the gist of it. But I remember when I come down and I bless them or whatever in, in the Aravona, I remember some of the girls are just... That's beautiful. They don't know what to do. They just, they, they're just stunned. You know, they really are. Words are powerful. They really yeah. are. It's amazing. And, and we would like, what can someone read to prepare themselves for Go wedding? Go on. I'll tell you what they should do. I tell everybody this. There are videos. If you go on the uh, Go Watch, 
www.gowatch.org. You will find in the corner it says uh, Our Faith. Click down and you'll see videos. Go there, and if you want to read it, you can go on to where it says uh, liturgical texts. And you can see all the baptism, the wedding, funeral services, all the texts, divine liturgies, everything. But if you want to watch it or see it, you can do the same thing if you go to the videos. Okay. You watch a baptism, you watch a... a, a, a so getting a better a idea. Mar yeah. You'll see confession, you'll see penance. I mean, it, they're very... And, and the priests are excellent that do it. I'm they're sure. very good. I mean, and they're, they're all posted there so you can see it. Well, that's great. That's a lot of information that, you know, uh, people should be aware of. And it's all right. there. It's all there for you. Just get on the Arch Archdiocese right. website. It is. There's a lot of wonderful right. information on there if you want to find out about your yeah. saint, if you want to read more about our the Greek Orthodox religion. We, we really, really want to push and, and uh, inspire people to get on there, encourage you to get on there and read more about your faith. Right. And, Father, in closing, um, we would like to keep, leave a message to our viewers, also when you get married, to try and make it, to try and make it work. The only Don't way say um, divorce is not, you know, my right. father always said divorce is not an option. <laughs> I know. It, it, sometimes it, it has to be well, due, to, due to circumstances that are beyond your control. But if you're just fighting with your spouse and you're disagreeing with your spouse, we would like to recommend what is, therapy or counseling. Yeah. What did Jesus say about divorce? You know what he said? You of hard hearts. So something is making your heart hard towards the other person. And that's what you have to rectify. That's what this is about. Finding a place where you can look at that person. And that's what I say at the end of the service. I said, let me tell you. You know, we went around this table three times with the gospel. You're going to go now to your table, to the reception. And they're going to say, now John and Jill are now going to dance for the first time. Their first dance was not there. Their first dance was at the church, led by the gospel. And that's what, this is, that's what this means. It's that God is putting you together because you want to be together. He didn't force you to do this. See, that's the thing. You're doing that in the goodness of, of your heart. And whatever you see, and I say, whatever you see, may you have a marriage like my mother and my father. They never yelled at each other. They never cursed at each other. They loved each other, and they loved us. And that's why... I'm blessed to have such a family like that. Yes, and we're blessed to have a priest uh, such as yourself. And we're going to leave our viewers with the message, uh, closing a father's segment here. Love, leave the ego out the door, right. communication, and go to these, you know, uh, seminars. seminars. They're amazing before you get married and reach out. Yeah, very good. Log on to your, the Archdiocese website and, and uh, right. learn more about uh, getting married uh, in a Greek Orthodox uh, it's very good. Wait. You should see it. Everything's in it. Explained very well, yeah. and you'll enjoy it. Well, thank you, well. Father. This has been pleasure. wonderful information. Kidding? Thank you so no, much. No. So it's my pleasure. We're gonna cut to a commercial break and be right back right after these messages. Τώρα η ομορφιά δεν απαιτεί θυσίες. Στο The Face and Body Shop θα αποκτήσετε την ομορφιά και τη λάμψη που αξίζετε. Χρησιμοποιούμε μόνο βιολογικά προϊόντα, στις βαφές μαλλιών, την αποτρίχωση και τον καθαρισμό προσώπου. Μοναδικά αποτελέσματα στη θεραπεία κυταρίτιδας και λέιζερ. The Face and Body Shop. Εμπιστευτείτε μας σήμερα κιόλας. Διεύθυνση 4021 23 Avenue, Αστόρια και τηλέφωνο 718 204-9390 Αναλαμβάνουμε την περιποίηση για τις μικρές πριγκίπισσες στα παιδικά πάρτι. And we're back and we're here with our segment producers Irene Lignos, John Retzios and we have another Irene here today, today with us Greek-American blogger Irene Arcos is here with us to tell us where we should be vac uh, vacationing uh, to have our honeymoon and where we should be having our wedding in Greece. She has been writing about the G GAs, we call them, Greek Americans, for a while now. She's going to tell us her story. Irene, welcome to our set. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How, what inspired you to start a Greek American blog? Well, um, because I found that Greek women didn't have a, a voice online or in the media because the media was kind of more let's say old generation <laughs> okay and so uh, I needed a place to to kind of express the needs the interests and the accomplishments and to kind of 
bring pride to being Greek. And my side, although it's called Greek American Girl, it's for every woman of Hellenic descent all over the world. And I profile women from everywhere, from Sweden, from South Africa, from Australia. Congratulations. Israel, Israel everywhere. So well, we're very excited to have you here and we're gonna have you here more uh, on uh, this show because you definitely represent what we stand for here. Uh, on our channel and we are going to talk about weddings and you did a feature story on where we should be having our wedding in Greece. Oh absolutely, uh, I, we did, um, we researched a lot and we interviewed a few brides and wannabe brides and the, the, the verdict is there's no doubt about it, despite all the logistical problems Having a Greek destination wedding is the best thing you can do. As a Greek American or as ge in general, I think everybody should have a wedding in Greece. It is the most romantic place to get married. Absolutely. The air, just um, the, the kind of facilities you can get, uh, the bang for your buck. I mean, it's just uh, people love it. to go to the island and get married. It is a dream. So where, where are people going? What is the latest on um, destinations? I, I, I feel a lot of people, obviously the islands are big. Uh, Crete tends to be uh, a big choice on the list. Yeah, but I think people tend to congregate back to their roots. So, you know, you go back to your great grandmother's Horyo in Sparti or wherever, it, you know, it draws you because as you know, a Greek wedding is not just between two people. It's a between two clans, yes. you know? Two clans. So, two villages. Two villages, two villages. Yeah. And are so, getting married, yes. You, when people, when you get a, a wedding in Greece, it's a three day event. And everyone's invited. That's, that's everyone's so invited. Everyone's invited, right? So you want to go there and experience the island, right. spend time with everyone and meet everyone. And Mamma Mia, I have to say, is one of my favorite films in John. Tell me about Mamma Mia. Well, we I mean, we know it started off as a Broadway play. Who would have thought it would have been a great, huge hit, taking all of ABBA's songs from the 70s. But those are the same songs we hear every summer at Scandinavian Bar in Mykonos, in Crete, in Kios, in Ibra, which everywhere. Right, and it was filmed backdrop. there in, um, was it Skopelos? Idra, in Idra, yeah. That's yeah. what it's like, it, mm -hmm. it, where it wants to take place, and it's okay. And, and the whole village came. The whole like, village like the, came. She's like, I'm gonna invite like everyone. And then they made it into a film. Meryl Streep is fantastic, all of them. And all we wanna do is have fun. And that's what Greece is all about. Having fun, drinking a good wine, and then just celebrating the couple. Wonderful memories, and definitely the, uh, Greece is a wonderful destination for any wedding and honeymoon. My favorite is Santorini. I, I think the sunset is unsurpassable. And Irene, I want you to tell us now what is the appropriate thing to do and where uh, when you are the bridesmaid, the maid of honor. And as a guest, what colors are not on that list? Well, I think that, you know, it all depends on when you receive the invitation, what they state as the attire that is asked for. If you have to wear formal attire, it has to be more formal. So what Long is formal? Long dresses yeah. usually. Um, I think that in Greece, normally the traditions are that you won't wear black to a wedding, but here in America, it's a little more lackadaisical attitude towards black. Um, I also find that you don't want to wear white because, you know, you're kind of taking away from the bride's spotlight. Right, and a moment. It's how about talk? What about say, yeah, yeah, you know, she's wearing black, oh, she's, she's wearing, wearing white. white. You're not giving us too many choices here. Well, those are our colors, a... right? So one's the absence yeah, of color can. anyway. What about cream? Off, I think, how about off-white? I think off-white for the mother or close relatives of the bride is definitely acceptable with pearl tones, beautiful. But I think for guests, like, you should definitely have fun with prints and you know, gold dresses are really stunning. About red. red, yeah, why not? Absolutely, I don't see any right. problem with you know something like this—a cobalt blue, something. Just it's especially if it's anything summer. Anything but you wanna... white or black. Okay, yeah, we got pattern that. dresses are so in right now. Anything that complements your body and makes you want to dance all night long. Because the bride, more than anything besides a fashion show, wants really people to be on their feet, dancing and having fun and bringing good energy to the wedding. What do you right? suggest for uh, a wedding on an island which is more casual for the bride? So I think that for the bride, it's really nice to wear, depending on your body type and kind of what the style of wedding you're doing, but those mermaid dresses are beautiful. Uh, you wanna be able to dance and move, so even those princess cut dresses are really nice with some 
fluff and lace and you know a little ruffle but it's all about the small details. Barefoot? Should they be barefoot? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of barefoot but if you ask my mom she'll disagree so I guess it's preference but I think that changing the shoe is fine. I think that you can definitely you want to be comfortable. I think that's most important. They come out with beautiful sandals now that are white or sequined or whatever you want really. Are sandal, high heeled sandals appropriate for an island wedding? Well, I think what you have to find out, first of all, is, is the wedding going to be on the sand? Because if you're going to be sinking, no, I don't think that's so appropriate. <laughs> you're talking to someone and you're... Know. But you Should know, you I be think really that, dressed up or dressed down usually. On I the think island. that a, a heel is always fun. It makes a girl feel pretty. It adds a little, you know, zhuzh. zhuzh. But I think that, again, it's really. Um, some people like to wear flats. It's really up to you. As long as, again, the pedicure is pretty and you just it's appropriate. Keep your look. Flats are appropriate. Keep your for look. Island wedding, so that's okay. We're Absolutely. not going to be disrespecting anyone if Absolutely. we're wearing flats. John. No, and let me just throw in something as well there too, because it's always safe to keep it classy. If you can always go with a nice classy look, you know, for guys, we can wear a linen suit, a gray suit on the islands. I've been fortunate enough to go to islands, to weddings, you know, on islands from Chios, Tikriti, and Mykonos, and it's completely different, you know. It's no just ties. Like, I was, I was no just going to ask you, is it okay Kamisaki? not to wear a tie no if tie. you're the groom to an Last island wedding? summer, no tie. This summer, I was in a wedding in Greece, I wore a bow tie, and I shocked everyone because Greeks really don't wear bow ties, so I kept it American classy, and it was so nice. Very everyone was in, Exactly, rough. you know, or like a vineyard vines, you know, that type with a nice color that pops out. So it was really you know, a, a, a treat. The most difficult things to do is when you have a wedding abroad is to get that list together and how people will get there. I mean, what, how do people feel about that when planning a wedding abroad? Well, um, I think you have a couple things you have to keep in mind. Because, you know, you know that not everyone will be able to go, it forces you to really evaluate your relationships with the people on your wedding list. So you have to kind of really think deeply. And even though it's hard, you people love to go to Greece. It's just a matter of timing and also preparing people far enough in advance to make it happen. So you know, most couples prepare maybe a year before their wedding. If you're gonna have a destination wedding in Greece, you might have to do it two years, three years. But think about it. If you prepare people enough, then it becomes a very special thing because it coincides with their vacation plans and it's gonna be much more memorable than, you know, the slew of weddings that you've been to here in the States. So you may want to send a save the date or something, right? Save the, save the, the date, date. Look, save the look summer. Look forward to it as a vacation. Save the summer. And yeah. look forward to it as a vacation. It's like we're going to go vacation and we're going to go to our best friend's wedding. Absolutely. And we're very excited. You know, people are excited to go to, to plan that. Um, and also, I think that it's also a great way to introduce non-Greeks to Greece uh, on if you're, if you're doing your wedding in Greece because uh, it's you know your friends and family will be able to show your your non-Greek friends and uh, you know about our culture and they'll be able to. <laughs> oh yeah, at that, that oh, reception absolutely. when they start drinking the ouzo and everything. And, and Rocky. Like, exactly, they're like yeah, the Greeks. Love that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> well, we're gonna uh, move on to a person who knows a thing or two about wedding gowns. My good friend Angelo Lambru is gonna show us what's in fashion for weddings this year. Hair on 14th, a full-service salon that has a professional staff committed to providing a sophisticated, warm environment. Our expert stylists use the best products available in the beauty industry today. Come experience our superior techniques in highlights, color, cutting, styling, and more. Our Euro Laser Clinic has certified laser specialists that remove unwanted hair utilizing the Zimmer Cooling Method. JD Opticians, luxury eyewear that keeps your budget in sight. Premier European designers, Chanel, Bulgari, Tiffany, Oliver Peoples, Versace, and more. Personal service prescription eyewear, why you wait. We speak Greek, Milan Melinica. Trust your eyes to the specialist, JD Opticians. 
for all your optical needs. 152 10th Avenue, Whitestone, New York, 718-747-2470. There are so many talented Greeks all over the world, and I'm sitting with one of them. Angelo Lambru is haute couture, wedding designer, and not only. Uh, he is a South African uh, Greek Cypriot. Absolutely right. <laughs> and he came to the United States in 2000 to take over the wedding gown world. He's done many Miss Universe and Miss Botswana pageants. And his work speaks for itself. I mean, Angelo, you're very talented. I'm, I'm one of your biggest fans. Well, thank you, Yanamu. You've always been yes, and a great friend too. Um, so, so wedding dresses, it's just one of the things that we do. We do haute couture, so that means um, in the mix of doing evening couture, we also do bridal couture. So they're one-of-a-kind wedding dresses. I'd love for you to tell our audience the difference of, of, of couture. Define okay, couture. so couture. I mean, couture is, is a word that everybody throws here and there, and it's kind of like they're using lost it too its much, value. And that's why I want to explain to people what really what is couture. What is couture? It's an art. Couture is absolutely an art. Um, couture is something that um, uh, is referred to a gown that is handmade. Okay, so usually um, it's not something that is mass produced. It's not a gown that um, has been made um, a thousand times and comes to you, you know. Um, so it's one of a kind. When you're getting kind. a couture, it is yours and signature baby, it's all yours. Touched by my hands. Yeah. And your dresses are an art because uh, they really remind me of uh, a lot of the exhibits that they do at the Met. Um, every time I go to the Met and I'll see something, you know, so Vivian Westwood, uh, Alexander, McQueen. Alexander McQueen, they're just an art and this is what I feel when I look at your gowns, I can, the lines and the drapes and the, what inspires you, uh, Angela, when you design? Well, Yanamu, you know, everyone asks me that same question and, um, uh, you know, I, I've often racked my brains thinking, what does inspire me? You know, I'm not one to take off and sit on the Tibetan mountains getting inspiration, you know. Um, so my inspiration really is derived by women, my, my customers. You know, who am I dressing and how do I want this woman to look like? And ultimately, it's that woman who inspires me. That is amazing. And life, of course. Yes. And I notice you use a lot of different colors and not that really bright white when you design uh, and use fabric. Uh, your textiles are exquisite. They're silks. They're not very bulky. Tell me about where do you find your textiles? Well, look, all of our textiles are, are, are natural silks, okay? I insist on using um, only natural fibers. Um, and uh, they're all derived from Europe. They're all Italian or French um, uh, uh, silks um, and I only use the best laces out of France so I do believe that you know um, in order to achieve the best quality in an outfit you have to use the best um, ingredients yes. in my case that being fabric and uh, growing up where did you study and who were your idols as a designer all right, so my first idol was my father, okay? Not a designer, um, but um, just his work ethic and just the, the inspiration, you know, that he gave me as a child. And that... Um, what line of work was your dad in? My father did civil engineering, oh. which is construction in a different way, you know? Um, I construct dresses, he constructed buildings. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For similarities, but not quite the same. Yes, of course not. Mm -hmm. So you got your work ethic from your father. Got my work ethic from my father. So, um, you know, I'm a first generation South African. I was born in, in, in Southern Africa. So um, just to cut it all short, because it's, it's a complicated life. I've been everywhere and lived everywhere, but I was born in Zimbabwe, lived in Botswana and South Africa. So those are all three countries that are in Southern Africa. And then, of course, I, I did my teenage years in, in Cyprus. Oh, I see. And you went to uh, School of Design? Yeah, I did School of Design. I, I finished high school um, in uh, 1989. That was Cyprus. Went back to South Africa and did fashion. 
and that's where I learned the core and the, 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 the most of what I needed, the basic um, uh, uh, sort of foundations of, of fashion. When did you know you wanted to, to design a clothes? Um, <clears throat> Actually, quite later in life, um, up until I was about 14, 15, I always thought I was going to do architecture. Mm. And that was very well liked amongst the family, you know. Um, but then it soon changed. And uh, I decided to take a different direction because um, just my personality is just one that, you know, needs to change often. <laughs> so I thought seasons are great. Um, fashion changes with season, so perhaps fashion. Like I, I was really in search of trying to find a, a way to use my talent in, in, in a way that sort of gave me satisfaction. And you found that through through uh, uh, fashion dresses and dresses. Uh, yeah, dresses. Because I notice it's it's always even your pret-a-porter line. I remember, or was it yes. nightwear? Yeah, evening cocktail has always sort of been my my um, uh, my signature, strength yeah. and my s signature. So um, uh, you know, I have uh, you know, I like attention for detail. Um, it's difficult to sort of um, reproduce something that you've given birth to in many do you know what I'm saying yes of course well, um, you're, you're you're painting on someone's body with fabric that's it yeah. and that's what old couture is that's what couture is it's really it's one of a kind and that's where I find most of my my strengths lie really in and constructing one of a kind type uh, dresses it's almost like a canvas where I I, I I have the person in mind I have my fabrics and my colors and I, I just drape hours so, into the morning as a, as a uh, South African how do you find life in America how do you find fashion how different are the people here and the Greeks well look um, obviously New York is an uh, is an amazing city this is one place I've always wanted to be because it's a platform for any artist to to come and um, learn grow improve become so much better than um, uh, than what they thought, you know. So really, it carves you to be the best because you've got no choice, and um, that it keeps was, you going. That's true. New York is definitely it, it a city. It keeps you going. Yeah, it keeps you on your feet. <laughs> yeah, if you're not two steps ahead, well, you're gone. You know, the saying it'll chew you up and spit you out in no time. <laughs> if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. That's exactly what brought me here, Frankie's song. It, uh, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. So um, New York has been a very inspiring place because one, it, it, it forces you to find who you really are because it's, it's in search of, um, because of the fact that there's so much of everything, you really need to find who you really are, what is true to you um, in order to really take on that next step because the sky is the limit here and um, quite honestly for anybody who's traveled across the planet you know um, you'd want to see yourself improve and be better and right. that's the purpose of being here so um, it's a constant search to to become a better person um, do what you do at your very best mm -hmm. and um, I find New Yorkers have had such a great role because they're, um, they've been there, you know. All successful New Yorkers know that they've had to. It is to the world of fashion. It's a world of. It's the beginning of really. Well, I I don't know. I mean, Milan and Paris, as yes. far as fashion is concerned, I think they kind of they kind of set the, the 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 road for. They really do. I mean, um, for the, the rest of the world when it comes to fashion. Absolutely. I mean, you know. But New Yorkers take it and then they wear it and make it their own. New Yorkers embrace it in a different way. You know, they accept something new um, with more, with a, a grander sort of open scale. arms yeah. scale, exactly. So, um, and, and, and that's why the opportunities are so much more vibrant here than they are perhaps in Paris or, or Milan, you know. So, do you like the life here more than abroad? Uh, um, you know, I, I love life here because it keeps me going. And it, 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 you know, you're constantly in search for being a, a better person and better at what you do. Um, and I love the fast pace as well because that keeps you young, I guess. <laughs> I wish we could say that makes me feel tired, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know exactly what you're talking about. But Don't you want to get off the merry-go-round a little bit? Yeah, that's when you hit Greece. That's right. Greece you get and off Cyprus. The boat. 
If you've had enough in New York, just get on that plane and check out for a couple of weeks. Check out into a small, nice little hotel on the beach. Have Sounds someone good to serve me. fish good to, to me. you. It's a, I guess what I'm saying is a, a nice balance is, is good for you. You know, New York is great, but I think you need to get out and enjoy just the simpler things in life, like we, we know from our Greek side. That's true. What do women do wrong in fashion? What do women do wrong in fashion? What is wrong? I mean, give, give our viewers your advice on girls. Do everything, but don't do this. I think that the, the, the one thing that women do wrong is um, they take advice from all the wrong sources. Which are? Which are? The magazines, I'm kidding. The magazines. <laughs> well, in one aspect, yes. Because, you know, what's written in a magazine often caters to the masses, okay? Every single person is different. Everyone is an individual. And I think um, what's been going on is instead of one uh, finding themselves and their own particular style, you know, they, they tend to follow a trend. And they all look the same. And everyone starts looking the same. And, and not everything, you know, uh, looks good on everybody. So I think it's, it's really good to just uh, step back, look at yourself, and really truly um, find what looks good on you in, in your own head first before you start taking advice right. you know obviously there's experts out there who can advise you but i think it all starts from within oh, it's I like, like it. finding your own favorite food you know or color what i favorite. can't tell you what your favorite food is yanamu no you cannot <laughs> but i can tell you what dress looks great on you what dress looks good on me? but you can also say what doesn't look good on you yes that's true so well, women need to be like you oh well thank you <laughs> Angela, we love you. We love your designs. Uh, we want to see more of you. Where can someone find you if they're looking to uh, uh, choose the wedding gown of their dreams? Not only, you, you, you'd you also do night uh, cocktail dresses and evening gowns. Yes, um, you know, uh, quite often we do mothers of the bride. We do, um, you know, anybody who's attending a gala, an evening event. Uh, but predominantly we do cater to your brides. Yes. Um, so we're located in the East Village here on 96 East 7th Street and um, they can see your designs online they can see our designs online if you go to www.angelolambrew.com Wonderful. they'll get a flavor of what I'm all about Good. and um, there are uh, there is a, another boutique uh, where you can find my things um, and that's at Gabriella's also here in Manhattan mm -hmm. um, but because it's such a personal service that I provide and because we do haute couture um, it is advisable that you come and visit us here because you know our whole um, concept is creating something that is specifically designed for you, one of a kind. So, look up Angela when you're ready to have that special dress specifically designed for you by the master, Angela Lambro. Angela, thank you for having us. We wish you lots of luck and more gowns to come. Thank you, Yana. More always a pleasure. Ο Dr. Peter Patetsios είναι board certified γενικός ενδοκιχειρουργός και συνεργάζεται με το St. Francis και το North Shore University Hospital. Το πλήρες εξοπλισμένο μας ιατρείο προσφέρει όλες τις θεραπείες εγγυακών παθήσεων, διαγνωστικούς υπερήχους όλων των αρτηριακών και φλεβικών ασθενειών, θεραπεία της φλεβίτιδας με λέιζερ και σκληροθέραπη με εξαιρετικά αποτελέσματα και επεμβάσεις που προσφέρονται στο άνετο περιβάλλον μας. Ο Dr. Πατέτσιος και το προσωπικό μιλούν ελληνικά. Για ραντεβού επικοινωνήστε στο 516-570-6818. Είμαι πολύ επερήφανος που προσφέρω τις υπηρεσίες μου στους ανθρώπους που υποφέρουν. Κάνω το καλύτερο, εύχομαι υγεία σε όλους. Το United Brothers Fruit Market, γωνία 30 Avenue και 33ο δρόμο στην Αστόρια, έχει όλα τα εποχιακά και υπευτικά, τόσο φρέσκα και λαχταριστά, σαν να βγήκαν από τον κήπο σας. Ανοιχτό 24 ώρες καθημερινά, σε 4.000 τετραγωνικά, προσφέρει μεγάλη ποικιλία από φρέσκα φρούτα και λαχανικά στις καλύτερες τιμές. Και τώρα, αποκλειστικά για το United Brothers Fruit Market, τοπικές φάρμες στο Long Island και Upstate New York θα παράγουν για μας εποχιακά φρούτα και λαχανικά, όπως ραδίκια, αυλίτα, σέσκουλα, ντομάτες, φασολάκια, αγκινάρες, κουκιά και όλα τα φρέσκα μυρωδικά. Ροδάκινα με γεύση Ελλάδος και έντεκα ποικιλίες μήλων στο Apple House μας. 
στο κατάστημά μας συνεχίζουμε να προσφέρουμε άριστη εξυπηρέτηση, καθαριότητα, τιμιότητα και εξαιρετική ποιότητα και για τους πελάτες μας. 15 λεπτά πάρκι δωρεά. Και μην ξεχνάτε, το United Brothers, γωνία 30 Avenue και 33ο δρόμο στην Αστόρια, ποτέ δεν είναι αργά, γιατί είμαστε πάντα ανοιχτά. Hey, Callie here with New Greek TV, their official makeup artist. I'm also a freelance makeup artist. You can check out my site at www.curlsandlashes.com. I'm here with Espina. I'm going to show you a bridal look and also give you a few tips of what to look out for in your bridal makeup trial. Um, on this table, I have a few of my favorite products. We can first start with the Giorgio Armani Illuminous Silk Foundation. It's one of my favorite foundations. It lays on perfectly on the skin and it looks flawless in person and in photos and for video. I use an airbrush brush to slightly apply the makeup all over the face. Um, when booking your trial, it's, it's good to ask your makeup artist before you book your trial if they're using airbrush or foundation makeup. If they're using foundation makeup, the best thing to do is recommend or even purchase your own Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. Once that is done, um, we use a bronzer. Look out for artists that actually highlight and shade the face, accentuating, turn a little this way, accentuating the cheekbone, shading the forehead, and slightly shading the nose to shape it. Because once you apply the foundation, the nose will lose its shape. Also too, I use um, a talc-based powder so that your face can remain shine-free for the entire evening. And you can just apply it all over the face. Now for the cheeks. Um, I use a blush called Desire by NARS. It's a very bright pink. However, it comes out on the cheeks like a flushed, um, like a flushed bridal tone. Typically, when I create the blush, I use the angle of the nose to the ear. And in a circular motion, I move it up and down. You can swipe some on the forehead, the nose, and the chin. Next, for the eyes, I use a primer by Urban Decay. This will set the eye makeup and it'll last for the entire night. I've had brides call me the next day as if they have nothing better to do and tell me how well their makeup has lasted. So for this look, I'm gonna do a day um, outdoors look where the eye will be light and brighter. There's no right or wrong way of doing your makeup for the day of the wedding, it's whatever you feel great in. So now I'm just shading the outside part of our eye to give it a definition. The color I'm using is by MAC. It's called Saddle. It's like a neutral toned color. I spend a lot of time blending the colors. Um, I'm very cautious when it comes to blending the colors and not being able to see where one color starts and when one color ends. It's something else to look out for when your makeup artist is actually applying your makeup for the day of the trial. Make sure they blend the colors well so that it can have a flawless look at the end. So now another important thing is to actually fill in the eyebrow. Make sure there aren't any gaps. Because in photography and on video, the light will snap and you'll see gap in the eyebrow. The brand that I use is Anastasia. They have excellent brow pencils and brow powders. From this point, I can either use an eyeliner, but I tend to like using shadows. I have something by Urban Decay, Naked 2. Very neutral tones, great for weddings. I slightly tap on the shadow, creating the liner. 
hookups. Another trick for the day of the wedding, um, I'll mix black liner with either a navy, which will accentuate a green eye, or I'll use black a liner um, mixed with a purple, which accentuates hazel eyes. So after the liner has been applied, we're gonna apply some mascara. Be sure that the lashes get curled first and mascara is applied before any fake lashes are applied. Because you will see the, the hairs that are lighter underneath the fake lash and it'll break the line of the lash. Can I squeeze? I use the Dior New Look Mascara. Look down. Another trick while your makeup artist is applying your mascara, close this eye. Try to keep only one eye open as if you're aiming. It'll help you avoid a teary eye and blinking. Look eye level. After the mascara has been applied, look eye level so the mascara doesn't go on the top or the bottom of the lid. Look down. One of my favorite touches is actually taking a really light shadow and just pulling it underneath the eye. Look up. And here's your bridal beauty look. <laughs> just to recap, for your bridal trial, make sure you book it three months in advance. You find out what product your makeup artist is using. Um, if you're not sure and your skin is sensitive, I'd go for the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. When you actually arrive for your makeup trial, be sure to have a picture of a look that you, the way you've done your makeup and one of your favorite bridal looks, either from a celebrity, a magazine, um, that helps the makeup artist know how to make a makeup look that will suit you. Um, also, when mixing the colors, I try to avoid just a harsh black line. I'll mix it with navy for green eyes or even blue eyes, and I'll mix it with purple for hazel eyes. Also, make sure your makeup artist is using a primer, um, powder, and blends the makeup very well, especially around the eye. You do not want to see where one color begins or one ends, unless it's just the liner. Um, at the end, I use a product, it's a setting spray by Urban Decay. This will set the makeup and it'll last throughout the entire night. Close your eyes. <laughs> and she's done. Thank you, everyone. Κοπιάστε για καταπληκτικό φαγητό. Κοπιάστε για γνήσια κυπριακή κουζίνα. Κοπιάστε για ζωντανή μουσική κάθε Παρασκευή και Σάββατο. Κοπιάστε. Αναλαμβάνουμε και κοινωνικές εκδηλώσεις στην ανανεωμένη αίθουσά μας. Τώρα και free delivery. Κοπιάστε στο 2315 31 Street Αστόρια με τηλέφωνο 718 932 3220. Homeric Tools. Πάντα κοντά στην ομογένεια, πάντα με χαμηλότερες τιμές. Homeric Tools. Το γραφείο παράδοση που επί σειρά ετών φροντίζει τον Έλληνα ταξιδιώτη με υπευθυνότητα και του προσφέρει ασφάλεια και άνεση στα ταξίδια του. Homeric Tools. Το Α και το Ω για τα ταξίδια σας. Για πληροφορίες και κρατήσεις θέσεων, τηλεφωνήστε στο 212-753-1100. One of my favorite stores here in Astoria, Artopoli, and whoever doesn't know where Artopoli is, you have not come and seen anything. The best food, the best bakery, the best sweets. Thank you, Yana. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we're with Regina Catopodi, who is one of the owners, and we love her. She's very sweet. Regina, well, welcome to New Greek TV in Calimera, USA. Thank you so much, Yana. So on this wedding episode, we yes. want to know everything that we need for a wedding. Okay. Um, we prepared just a little something to give you an idea. Um, First of all, all of our pastries are ex totally traditional. Um, we pride ourselves on keeping them that way. And that's important to keep the tradition. Very, very. And you know that Greeks, I think, um, keep to their traditions more than anybody else. Yes. And so, we allow me to show you, we have the kurapieda, which is present at all celebrations of life. 
and the Mela Macarona, and then we have Xerotigana from Criti. Um, these also, we do different things with them. We make platters with them. We wrap them individually, and they're given out as a favor. Then we have the mini baklavas, also present on all tables. And then the amigdalata, which um, we make in all different kinds of varieties. They can be wrapped, and they can be um, presented to the guests at the church or they can be served at the reception. So usually at the church, you would have, uh, the traditional Greek wedding would have a tray and also at the reception. Yes, absolutely. And then we have, we also make bubonieres. Yeah, I love this. This I've yeah. never seen a bubonieres like this with, with honey. Is this honey's uh, preserved? These are spoon sweets. They're fresh fruits that are boiled in sugar and water. Very traditional, to glicoto putaliu. And we take our Hadzi Yanakis Kufeta, which won the International Taste Award for the best Kufeta in the world. I had like 20 before we started yes, airing. And I will not <laughs> allow any of my friends or family to get anything else. I like literally chase them around. They must get their Kufeta from us. And they come they in a lot them. of colors. They come in many colors also in many flavors. So we're, we're here to serve you to your tastes, whatever they be. Now, I have to say, we have become very advanced with the kufeta because I see here yes. tiramisu kufeta, coconut kufeta, pineapple kufeta. Tell me about that. And chocolate. And it, you know, it, it has a nice ring to it. And uh, like uh, yesterday, we sent out 20 pounds of uh, champagne and chocolate. Now tell me, are these the traditions that come from Greece and all these new uh, 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 style and flavors are coming from yeah, Greece? Everything is from Greece. And of course, you know, they want to be a little bit innovative as well, you know, to give the public something a little different, but still sticking to tradition. And so. Artopolis not only sticks to tradition, but they stick to the finest ingredients. Tell yes. us a little bit about what kind of ingredients you use. Okay, we, everything in this store is made from scratch. The only thing we import are our spoon sweets because the fruits are for a reason, because the fruits in Greece, there's no comparison anywhere in the world. And there's no comparison to your cakes, because I know you have wonderful wedding yes, and wonderful we baptis we do. baptism I, cakes. You know, I take um, our service to another level. I don't look at it as a business. I look at it as when someone comes in for a wedding cake, you're asking us to be part of your special day. That means a lot to me. And I'm on about 95% of the wedding cake deliveries. I want to make sure that it gets there in one piece and it's exactly what the customer ordered. So what is the wedding list when the, a bride comes, a bride-to-be comes in here and she says, Regina, give me my list. Okay, the cufeta for the bubonieres. Uh, we make many kinds of bubonieres. Food seems to be big these days. Like we'll uh, make little boxes with baklavadakia or boxes with cufeta wrapped beautifully, of course, with the bride and groom's name on it. Um, and then we go on to the platters that appear on all the tables with curapiedes, melamacaron, or whatever you see, the diplis, baklava, and the amigdalata. Um, we really try to hold true to the tradition, and then our wedding cakes uh, will make you anything your heart desires. I mean, you, you, you bring in a picture or give us an idea. Um, it takes about four or five appointments to get it right. We have tastings. Tastings, I'm coming. Yes, yes, <laughs> please. So you get the cake right. Our pleasure. Um, you know, I try to learn a little bit about the bride and groom, how they met, what part of Greece they're from, and all that becomes incorporated into the cake. And then if they don't have an idea of how they want it to look, then we start with the bride's dress and you know what they're into. Uh, professionally, theme. you talk about the theme. The theme. Um, I had done a wedding cake with a helicopter off to the side because one of our grooms was a helicopter pilot in the Gulf War. Oh wow! And so um, we'll do anything. But not only Greeks. I mean, you're not only oh, you cater no. to all everyone. Absolutely, uh, our wedding cakes, engagement cakes are you know we in fact. I'll tell you something, there's more um, non-Greeks that come in for wedding cakes than Greeks. Oh my God. What is the most uh, favored flavor for uh, a wedding cake? Our, our vanilla sponge with our Belgian chocolate mousse. That's like uh, one of the favorites in here.
Well, all I can tell you guys is when you're ready to get married or when you're ready to have a christening, come over to Regina. She's going to take care of you. You're going to be in great hands, great service, and the most amazing fresh products. Straight from Greece and Astoria, New York. Regina, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yana. It was a pleasure.